This is Geometry, Chapter 10, Section 6, in which we will study secants, tangents, and how they relate to angle measures. Well, we've already talked about tangents. We did that last time. We need to know what a secant line is. So a secant is a line that intersects a circle exactly twice. Okay, remember, tangents only touched it once. Secants touch it twice. They go all the way through the circle. So there was a secant. Now, if we have two secants intersecting inside the circle, then we're going to get some angles going on. We're going to get four of them, but we're really only interested in two because this angle will be the same as this one by vertical angles. Two will be the same as this angle by vertical angles. Okay. Each of those two angles, angle 1 and angle 2, we can find based on the arcs that are made. So angle 1 is going to be equal to half the sum of its two arcs, AD and BC. Angle 2 is equal to half the sum of its two arcs, AB and CD. Okay. Remember... Look for the angle that's congruent, or the, uh, which arcs the angle forms. That's what I'm trying to get out. So angle 2 forms that arc, and angle 2 is equal to this one, which forms this arc. And those are the two arcs that go together. So let's find the value of a few angles here. If we want to find the measure of angle X here, that's going to be equal to half of this one and this one. So X is going to be half of 116 plus 47. That's half of 163, which is 81 and a half. Let's try a second one on. Here we're looking for angle X, which would come from this arc and this arc. Unfortunately, we don't know either one of those arcs. The two arcs we know are formed by these, these other angles. Well, let's find those other angles. I'm going to call that angle Y. If we can figure out y, then we can figure out x. Well, y will be half of 55 plus 75. Well, that's half of 130, which is 65 degrees. Well, if this is 65, then x will be 180 minus that, which gives me x equals 115. One more, in this case, we're looking for an arc. Well, the same idea still holds true. 128, the angle, is half the total of these two. So 128 equals half of x plus 154. I distributed my half, subtract the 77, and then divide by a half, which is the same as multiplying by 2 gets me how big the arc for x is. Now one thing I want you to notice with all of these problems so far here, where we had the half of the sum, notice where the angle is. It's inside the circle in all three cases. That will be important later. Okay. Another option that we have is to look at where a secant and a tangent intersect each other. And they can either intersect outside the circle or they can intersect on the circle at the point of tangency. So this theorem, 1013, takes us through what happens when they intersect at the point of tangency. Right here at angle J, or at point J. 
when they intersect at the point of tangency, then the angle is half of the arc that it made. You've probably heard that one a few times by now. The angle is half the arc. When that vertex is on the circle, the angle is half the arc. So if I want to find arc J, L, K, this big arc, well, the angle will be half of that arc. So divide by a half, same as multiplying by 2, that gives me 232 for that one. If I wanted to find the smaller arc, all I would have to do now is subtract from 360. If I didn't know this arc over here, I could subtract from 180 with the angle, figure out what this angle is, and then the angle is half the arc. All right, let's look at another one here. We have some information about these arcs, and our job is to find the measure of angle RQS. Okay. Since we know this arc is 176 and this one is 62, a little subtraction gets us the last one. It leaves 122. Well, now that we know that arc, our angle is half of the arc. So our angle is 61 degrees. So we've looked at what happens when they intersect on the circle. Our next theorem really is kind of like three theorems all in one. They all deal with all the options deal with things intersecting outside the circle. Okay, Don't let the verbiage up here bother you. The key word is this one. They intersect outside the circle. Okay, Doesn't matter which case it is. If they intersect outside the circle, then the measure of the angle between the two lines is half the difference in the two arcs. Okay. And I have all three cases drawn here for you. This is two secants intersecting outside. This is one secant and one tangent intersecting outside. And this is two tangents intersecting outside. In all three cases, the angle that is made there will be half the difference in the two arcs that it makes. Okay. Again, don't let the verbiage get in your hair. Okay. Worry about where did it intersect. It's outside. And that's the key. So if we're going to find the measure of angle S that's outside, it's going to be half the difference of the two arcs. One arc is 179, the other one is 71. Half the difference of those, well the difference is 108. Half of that, angle S is 54 degrees. Okay. Our next one, at first glance, looks like there's not enough information but we can figure out the uh, missing arc because together it's 360. So 360 minus 85 gives me 275. Now I can find the measure of angle B. This is two tangents. It's outside, so the angle is half the difference. 275 minus 85 is 190. Half of that is a 95 degree angle. One last one, we've got a couple of uh, secant lines intersecting outside the circle. So this angle will be half of the difference between those two. Now, 
clearly common sense would tell you the one on the circle farther away from the angle is going to be bigger. Okay. So we're looking at 25, the angle, equals half the difference between the two things, 110 minus this arc. Okay. This time, instead of distributing the half, I just went ahead and multiplied by 2 to get it out of my way. 110 minus something gives me 50. That something must be 60. I played a little bit of different algebra there, but that's okay. So the question that is always asked with these problems, how do I know which formula to use? Is it half the sum? Is it half the difference? Is it just half the arc? What's going on here? The answer is it all depends. It depends on where the angle is located. When you can identify the location of the angle, this chart will help you know which thing to do. If your angle is at the center of the circle, then the angle is actually just equal to the arc. If it's on the inside of the circle, not at the center, but on the inside, then the angle is equal to half the sum. If the angle is on the circle, then it's just half the arc. And if it's outside the circle, then it's half the difference. Locate your angle and see where it is relative to the circle. Center, inside, on circle, or outside and then this will tell you what to do. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down, bring them in with you, and we'll see you in class.